What's up my folks? How's everybody doing today? This evening whenever this finds you, I hope everyone is very blessed and doing well. I want to thank everyone for the support. You guys are fucking awesome. I don't care what anyone else says about y'all. Um, today let's talk about conditioning. Um, I've had a few guys make comments on email comments about fat dogs. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll go ahead and make it known. I don't like keeping my dogs real light and all. Uh, I like keeping a little bit of fat on them when I'm keeping them. And when they get older, I let them keep a little bit of fat on them. And uh, when they puppies, I raise them up healthy. I let my dogs get as big as they can possibly get, you know. I don't try to take a... a a big dog and make him little or nothing like that. I let him be what size he is. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I work. I let a dog's <clears throat> can body tell me what weight he is. You know, I condition him till he's at his what I think is his peak condition. And let's go over a little bit about that. Um, I've had folks ask me about showing dogs since I did that video about showing dogs and stuff and what it takes and and all and. To show and be successful in bulldogging. Look, there ain't no second place in bulldogging. Okay? There's the winner and the loser. So, to be a winner, you got to go at it full bore. I mean, that's in anything. Okay? So, the end game is to have a goal, a dog like this. That's stripped free of all fat. That's full of fast twitch muscle. There's no bone showing. You want him to be completely on point when the other dogs are gassing out over there looking stupid because the owners didn't know what the fuck they were doing. Your shit is grabbing a gear doing burnouts. You know, that's best in show quality dogs. That's what I'm talking about, making best in show type dogs. Okay? Uh, being the best in whatever you're showing. If you're doing weight pull, confirmation, what the fuck ever. You know, if you're out there catching hogs with your buddies like we do, you want your buddies to be like, damn, that's a bulldog. You know, you want to show out right. And to be the best, you got to think like the best. Today, I'm going to talk a little bit about conditioning equipment. People are asking about equipment and all. And I ain't building equipment anymore. I build equipment for me and mine, and that's it. If I decide to show a dog, I got, you know, what I need to do to get one in shape for a show but right now there ain't no shows around here so i ain't sweating showing no equipment or anything like that i don't have any kit treadmills here at the house i don't do anything like that all i have to do is road work my dogs um but you can get a dog in shape from road work to anything any if you got enough time you can do it in shape it, it's all about time you know what i'm saying you can get a dog in excellent shape on a bicycle and and um road working him and hand walking him if you got enough time to do it in but to average dog like this right here a natural keep you're looking at about 12 weeks to get one peaked in like this and then you only have a time period so you got to know that time period you got to know your food schedule you got to know what water to put in when how much to put in when to take it away uh how much salt to add and when to take the salt away when to, i mean all kinds of different shit don't fall for the conditioning in the can like all the supplements and crap like that shit that's made for people ain't made for dogs do stuff natural do a natural keep a natural feed uh you know keep their kidneys clean every keeps real hard on a dog okay i don't even put, put my dogs in shape just to take pictures and put them online uh every keep is really hard on the animal and it's hard on you it's hard on their feet it's hard on everything so let's talk about a little bit, bit of equipment here all right this is a cat mill or Jenny. This is uh, my design, my mill. Um, this this mill right here works very well. It's a cable design. It took me years to uh, to design this mill, but it's weighted at one end with plate weights. You can weight it for the dog. It's got uh, cables on it, so you can tie it up to the tension of the dog. Uh, it's all run by cable support, so it won't pull the dog's shoulders out. Um, it's a really good design, and if you got anybody that can build you a mill like that, um, it, it's a great, it's a great tool. I mean, and this one right here is was I got several of these out in the world, and I guarantee you the guys that have them, they love them, and uh, you won't talk them away from them. They're real lightweight; they don't pull on the dog. The dog can run it real free. 
real free spinning you can adjust the length how big you want it um this was about middle you could go a lot bigger than this but this one was plenty big um this one now is set up about about the same distance um but they're very good quality tools and i think a man that has a cat mill is going to be head and shoulders above on conditioning okay um he's just going to have an advantage if he knows how to use it and if the mill's built right otherwise he might just hurt his dogs it'd be more trouble than it's worth everything you got to do in moderation on these dogs a little bit at a time a little bit at a time and lots of rest now all right here we have what they call a belt mill it is a belt mill this is my design also i put that on the side of every one of them <laughs> just made people scrape it off if they didn't want it on there pull them off but um every one of them is the same exact model uh they're very at first i try to break them in for but when they're new they're tough you got to break them in this is something good to to put your uh dogs on you know just for maintenance like a couple minutes a day just take one off the chain put them on it and break it sucker in because once you get it broke in it's a real good piece of equipment but it took a while to break in that's a real industrial belt like with a carpet backing but they're great they're great mills um you can't hurt the dog's paws on them you know the pads they won't tear the nails off it's like them running on a carpet back um very smooth it's got conveyor belt rollers i welded real close together so it's like running on rollers once you get that belt broke loose and broke in man it's like a brand new it's like a good fitting boot you know it just runs real good um but that's a that's a good design uh if you can find you a good or a free spinning good free spinning carpet mill um you just want to, you, know, you can do a hand walk, a little bit of mill work. You don't want to get them very long on a carpet mill. It, it'll mess up their kidneys. It's hard on them. The belt mill is a little freer spinning, but still it's more of a muscle building mill. You know what I mean? I would do five fives on it. You know what I mean? Do five minutes on it, walk them 15 minutes, five minutes on it, walk them 15 minutes, five minutes on it, walk them 15 minutes, you know, and get them up to five fives and that be one workout for them, you know, something like that. But uh, that's a good, a good quality product to have too if you're going to compete. And of course, your slap mills. I mean, I build steel slap mills. What I use, I build what I can, you know, use use on it. But uh, it's a it's a good thing to have a slap mill. They that you can run them, and uh, they're they're not you want a real free spin and this was a, a nice deluxe model i used to make i made a cheap one but they didn't they weren't as near as good um if you're going to make a meal go ahead and build you a good quality meal okay that's my advice build the best one you can because uh you know that meal has is got to last you and these were all still welds buffed out i mean real fine built meal um had rubber bumper guards so their t pads couldn't get caught on anything roller blockers centered i duct taped the deck first time for them too i like to run with duct tape on the deck um all my welds were polished out and real nice mill you know when you when you make your mill make it a good no one mills them out of steel anymore that shit's too much work no one wants to do all that work uh not when they can do prefab you know aluminum and i don't blame them the new aluminum mills are sweet um and it's a lot less labor but these are the way i do them I, i'm old school still but anyway guys um you guys if y'all are going to compete in that level and show dogs you might as well go don't go with your half cocked man because them guys are coming now they're coming serious i mean anytime you're competing with an animal there's going to be competition okay that's what it's about and you know i mean like i said there's no fucking second place man not really so you guys do the best you can, and if you're going to do it, you're going to have to invest time and money. It's not a poor boy game. But um, you guys have good luck, and I hope you do well in it. I really do. And I appreciate the support from everybody. And um, I appreciate y'all getting them t-shirts. I'm going as quick as I can with them. Uh, I tell you, it must be nice being a damn graphic designer or whatever. Them guys got a dick. They come to work at 1030. They leave at 5. They don't work on Friday. And they got these little girls that run around and do all the fucking work. Just amazes the shit out of me. But um, anyway, should have learned the computers, huh? But anyway, you guys take care. Keep on bulldogging. 
And if you guys want a t-shirt, I'll leave my PayPal info in the bottom. You guys take care and be safe.